Welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. Renee, thank you so much for, for deciding to join us on We Choose to Thrive. I'm so happy you're here. I'm thrilled you were invited to be a part of it. <laughs> so um, tell us a little, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your backstory of what led you to be where you are today. Okay. Um, my name is Renee Jean. I am an author as well as a casino dealer. I live in Las Vegas, but I'm originally from Lansing, Michigan. Um, my background, are you looking more for what led me to be a part of this group? Or? Right. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it was a relationship, my first love, when I was a teenager. And he was extremely manipulative. He wasn't necessarily physically violent most of the time, but more psychologically abusive. Mm -hmm. And had me fully convinced that unless he said so, I wasn't worth anything. And it took many years to get past that. I've learned that abuse is abuse no matter what kind of abuse. That's true. <laughs> so what was the starting point of you deciding that's not your story and that you wanted to heal from it? Uh, that was many, many years later through my first marriage and into my second. I, I struggled to do anything. I couldn't even go across the street to the store mm -hmm. and by myself because what if I got the wrong type? What if I forgot something? I didn't want to let anybody down. And so I, I fought with that for a long time. And after my dad passed away, I went back and finished my degree in school to celebrate my graduation, I went to do volunteer work in Australia. And I had a embarrassing situation where I fell off of a trailer and got run over in a glass face. You got what? I, I fell off the trailer that we were being transported on. I slipped and got run over by the trailer that was being pulled. <laughs> face first down into a sheep pasture. <laughs> I wanted to die because everyone was going to make fun of me and everyone was going to torment me. And instead, they all came over to see if I was okay. They came to, to be my friend. And it was the first time I realized it's okay to mess up. People will still be my friend. And so in that experience, is that's where your, your first change was. This is where you started to realize some of your own value. That was, yeah, that was when I first realized that it was okay not to be perfect, that everybody messes up. It's just, you know, get up, dust yourself off, laugh at yourself and move on. And that was without question the most primary moment. And then it, it just kind of proceeded from there. And I met some people online after I became a writer, or I guess after I embraced being a writer who started sharing their own experiences and being able to talk about it with somebody who really understood made it that much easier for me to share what I had been through. So did you um, read any books that was helpful for you? What did you um, go to counseling? What was your, what were your steps? For me, it was working with my own personal support network, my friends, my family. It was opening up to them as to what I had finally been through. They, most of them didn't know. I never told them. Mm -hmm. And I have a very good friend who's a fellow writer, and she thought it would be a fun idea, not fun, I guess, but a good idea to share what we had been through to help other people see that they weren't alone if they went through something like that. So I read her book, she read mine, and we launched our books last October during Domestic Violence Awareness Month to 
kind of help other people and I got involved with the Shade Tree organization here in Las Vegas. Very cool. Of our book launch to the Shade Tree. So. I'm just preparing to speak um, at an event and it's called The Healing Power of Story. And um, I, I have to say my hat's off to you because um, I just turned 60 and I just had the, had the courage to tell my story. And when, the younger you are, the more years that you have to, to live rich and live fully and, and be who you really are rather than keeping those secrets hidden. You know? it, it's, yeah, it takes a little while, but you know, and I think the hardest thing was when I first started writing it, I had buried everything for so long mm -hmm. that it brought everything forward and I, I went through a very big anxiety attack and, but I opened up to some of the people I work with and my, my day job, the Venetian here in Las Vegas, they are outstanding and they actually donated the ballroom for our book launch. Oh, how wonderful. And all the people at work, I work with thousands of people and they all step forward to say good job and thank you. That's beautiful. It was incredible to have that kind of support. Well, you should be so proud of yourself because really once we can set ourselves free by telling our stories, not only does it benefit us, but others that read our stories can see a little bit of themselves in there and also kind of just this chain reaction of gaining strength for ourselves because someone else had the courage to speak up, you know? And that, when I, um, when I did the book launch, I apologize, I'm crying. <laughs> when I did the launch last year, I did avoid doing readings from the book for a while until we, um, we had an officer from Las Vegas Metro Police Department. And he kept pushing me and pushing me. And he's like, you need to do a reading. You need to do a reading. And I did. I broke down at the end. But the one of the directors from the Shade Tree organization was there. And she came running over and gave me a hug. And my boyfriend, who played Master of Ceremonies for us, held the mic and came around and hugged me and it it was very helpful to be able to open up and share that with so many people so I, what a beautiful beautiful place that that's put you in it was like nothing else i've ever had the opportunity to do and it's something that made me want to continue to help and to reach out and to let people know if you're going through something like that i'm not a counselor by any means nor am I. But I'm happy to be a friend. Very, very I'm cool. There. So what would you say, Renee, to somebody that's been going through their, their, their stuff and they're not happy and they're held back by the pain of what ha has trapped them, whether it's domestic violence or as an adult or even starting in childhood, what would you say to somebody that's just realizing, you know what, there's way more to life than this and I need to do something about it? As odd as it sounds, the first thing I would say is it's not going to be easy, but it's totally worth it. Mm -hmm. There's going to be days you just want to run and hide. There's going to be days that it feels like no one else is going to understand. But the important thing is, we do understand not only do we understand where you've been we understand what you're going through now mm -hmm. we understand that i want to run i want to hide i don't want to talk about it that feeling of no one else has ever felt exactly what i could do mm -hmm. that's why we're quiet for so long we all have that feeling right you don't have to talk about it every day no and it's not even healthy to talk about it every day and yet, um, because we feel all alone, mm -hmm. I have a, a graphic that I'm, I've, I saw when I was looking for, to express what I was really thinking. And it was of a girl. It was kind of a black and white graphic. And she had sunglasses on. But on one eye, it was written, the shame that they do not see. And the other side was the shame they do not know. Mm -hmm. And be, it's because of that that we, we keep ourselves kind of bundled up and, and protect ourselves, and yet we're miserable. Yes. <laughs> and it weighs heavy, and it causes depressions and all kinds of other things. And um, 
it's not worth it. <laughs> it's simply not worth it to be feeling that way. So the, the road to, to healing is certainly worth taking those steps. It is. And it, that's why I say, you know, it's not easy, but it's so worth it. It's, and it doesn't, there, I haven't found an end yet necessarily, but when I get upset, when I have those days, when I'm like, you know what, maybe it isn't worth it. Maybe I don't want to fight anymore. I take a step back. I have that day. I cry. I have my pity party and you know, hide in myself and think, what about somebody else that feels the same way? Mm -hmm. It's not, we're a team. Even if we don't know each other, we are a family. And sometimes I'm the one that needs the extra support. And sometimes I'm the one that gets to give it. That's, That's beautiful. That is so beautiful. We have our, um, our Facebook group. It's called The Woman I Love. And in this group are women like you and I. And over the last week, we've had two, two different women that have had some really tough moments. And I was so pleased because everybody rallied around, you know, and, and just offered words of encouragement and ears to listen, you know, and to hear. And so these are such important. We're in, we're here together, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes that's all it takes. And sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter if you're just having that bad day. You just need that space, and that's fine. That's fine. The fact is your family, whether it's, you know, your blood, like I'm very fortunate that my oh. family is supportive, and my boyfriend has been there for me every step of the way from the moment I said, you know what, I'm ready to face this. And he knows if I'm having one of those days, he lets me go in my office. He just, you know, brings offerings of chocolate and happiness. <laughs> And then there are days that if I'm just laying in bed and I'm crying and I just need that somebody to come and hold my hand, he'll do that. And sometimes he's like, you know what, let's go for a hike. Let's get out. Let's go do something. And he'll get my mind off it. And he's, after almost seven years, very good at reading which one I need that day. Oh, that's because there's love. <laughs> yeah, he's been an unbelievable support. And, you know, he hasn't been through that type of a situation, but it doesn't mean that he doesn't understand how it feels. Mm -hmm. He's a um, veteran and the character that I wrote in Survivor is actually the background of one of the characters from another book I'm writing about PTSD. And he understands that very well. Mm -hmm. And he's helped me have a lot of insight to that. So he was from the very, very cool. Well, I'm really proud of you that you've taken this. Yes. I'm so happy you decided to join We Choose to Thrive. And um, I don't know, when you get in our group, you'll see the book cover that it's, it's just the start of the book cover. Shh, my dogs are just having to act up. Um, it's the start of the book cover. Your face will be on it. So I'll need a um, headshot of you and maybe... Um, and a link to your website or, or a link to your book so that we can do that. And then I'll also include you in our, our Facebook group. Okay. I, um, I have my author picture and I can send the link right now to the book, Survivor. Okay. Okay. My website is currently under construction, but whenever that comes okay. up, I'll send that to you. Okay. So um, send it to Becky at the woman I love .com if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. And I'll be seeing you in our group. And, Absolutely. And you're welcome to speak up as you as you wish and you're feeling, you know, it's a real time. And if there's times that you're feeling not so sharp, speak up too, because that's what it's for. Thank you so much. All right. Very cool. So such a pleasure to meet you. You too. And I'm glad we finally got the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> My computer just gets cranky sometimes. <laughs> Mine does too. <laughs> right. Well, thank you so much. All right. And thank you. Big hugs. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. 
Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal, but the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself, for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.